Many recent breakthroughs in machine learning have featured transformer models. In the past few months, DeepMind's AlphaGo generated working computer programs, and Google's Lambda project demonstrated high-quality, truth-based conversations. GPT-3, where the T stands for transformer, has also been popular for bringing dialogue capabilities to other apps in a modular way. Since 2017, when they were introduced, transformers have been central to much cutting-edge research. The paper that introduces transformers, Attention is All You Need, is quite dense. It took me two months to fully understand the structure of them. In this video, we will build a transformer in a spreadsheet to understand the key components and why they are effective. Previously in this series, we built a basic neural network, like this one here. We called it a fully connected neural network because all the nodes in one layer are connected to each other node in the previous layer. Neural networks are useful tools in machine learning because they are good at finding patterns. To simplify things a lot, we can think of them as a blue box which can find patterns from the data provided, or pattern finders. We also looked at convolutional neural networks, which we used to recognize certain letters. There were a lot of extra layers that we added to make this work, but to summarize, we added the ability to focus on the important data. With this extra focus, our pattern finding layer avoided being overwhelmed with so much data and was better at recognizing patterns. Then we looked at recurrent neural networks. These were able to take in any amount of text and find patterns in the data across time. This green self-loop arrow around the hidden layer effectively added memory to our system. Being able to remember what came before allows our neural networks to handle content such as text or video and do tasks like autocomplete, translation, or summarization. This video is about transformers. So what is that high-level secret ingredient that makes them more effective? Here's the architectural diagram from the initial transformers paper. I blurred the details because there's a lot to unpack here. At a high level though, we can see multiple layers of blue pattern finders, and before each of those, orange boxes, which convert the data into a new form. These data converter boxes are the key to success of the transformer model. The neural network is able to look at data in a different way, and that makes it easier to find patterns. Before we dive into the details of the data converter boxes, let's see an example of how it can be easier to spot patterns by changing how we look at data. Consider a two-player game with these nine words. Players take turns choosing words, and the first person to collect three of the same letter wins. For example, player one picks spit, and then player two picks nice. Player one collects two S's by taking sham. Player two then takes sock to prevent player one from collecting that third S. Player one takes raft, threatening to take three T's. Player two counters by taking not, and seems poised to win with three O's, but player one collects three A's by taking nape. Player one wins. When I saw this game for the first time, it was not clear to me how to easily find a winning strategy. Pause now if you want to try to figure it out on your own. The winning strategy is more clear when we rearrange the nine words into a three by three grid, and then the game becomes the same as tic-tac-toe, or knots and crosses. Collecting three of the same letter is the same as getting three values in a straight line. By looking at the same data in a different way, we were able to leverage our experience with a different game to solve our three-letter game, and the patterns became much easier to spot. This is the key to what makes transformers work so well. Let's look inside the orange data converter box to get a sense for how it works. Like convolutional and recurrent neural networks, transformers have both a mechanism for focusing on important parts, as well as a mechanism for remembering other inputs. There is also a component that can do a linear transform on the data. Linear here means multiplying and adding numbers to the data. In a moment, we will open up a spreadsheet and implement three different types of data conversion to get a feel for how this works. We'll start with just the linear transform part and eventually add the other components. The first conversion we will do is convert our data that is in binary, that is zeros and ones, into a format that is better suited for our neural networks. Zeros tend to be problematic in neural networks because zero times anything is zero and multiplication is a vital ingredient in neural networks. Another nice feature of having false be negative one is that we can invert false to true or vice versa by multiplying by negative one. The second data conversion is a substitution cipher. Specifically, it's called the at bash cipher, which exchanges the first and last letter of the alphabet, so A and Z, and then B and Y, and then C and X, and so on. We will implement the at bash cipher with just the linear transform component and then the full data converter box after we implement the focus and memory. We will finish with the classic interview question, reversing a string. This type of data conversion will make full use of all parts in the data converter box. 
By then, I hope you have a good understanding of the core of these transformer models. First though, we want to turn zeros into negative one and keep ones unchanged. We can do this by multiplying by two and subtracting one. One option we have is to implement this with a for loop. Our data is a vector or a list or array, so we can just go element by element and do the math. A second option, and the one we will be using, makes use of matrix multiplication. A reason to prefer matrix multiplication is that such operations are very fast when run on a graphics processing unit, and GPUs tend to be a commonly used resource for training and running neural networks. Let's go ahead and implement this in Sheets. If you want to make a copy and follow along, use the on-screen link or one from the description and join me on the linear transform sheet. Here we have our input letters, and I'm converting them to five binary digits using VLOOKUP and DES to BIN. This table down here has the mapping from letters to numbers. The largest number is 31 because that's the biggest five digit binary number that we can have. The first thing we need to do is convert the binary string to a vector of five numbers. I'm intentionally leaving column C blank, so in column D, we should use the mid function to pull out single letters from the string and the column function to make the formula draggable. Then we use if to either use the number one or zero instead of the string. Finally, we'll drag the bottom right corner to fill this in for all of our digits and then all of our inputs. We will treat these five vectors from our inputs as one matrix. Here in the middle, we will set up our second matrix. Let's start with a five by five identity matrix for now with ones on the major diagonal and zeros everywhere else. There's a blank row and column here that we will need in a minute. The mmult function makes it really easy to multiply our first matrix by our second matrix. Friendly reminder that the order that we do matrix multiplication does matter, so make sure we're doing the left matrix times the right matrix. To multiply our input vectors by two, we should change all the ones on this major diagonal to twos. Subtracting one from every cell is a little bit trickier, but this is where the extra column comes in. Let's put a one in the first column of every input. And then in the top row of our second matrix, we fill it in with negative ones. Because this top row is being multiplied by this first column over here, it has the effect of subtracting one after multiplying each input value by two. We do need to add in one more column of zeros so our output and input matrices are the same size. And then we change the area affected by mmult. This happens to be the same trick that we can use in a normal neural network to multiply by weights and add a bias. By adding in one more column, we can remove the addition step and do it all with a single matrix multiplication. The last thing we need to do is turn our vector back into binary. Because our final numbers are floating point values and won't necessarily be exactly positive one or negative one, we will use an if to turn anything bigger than zero into a one and anything less than zero into a negative one. For this example, that's not exactly necessary, but for our other sheets, it will be. To do this, we use several if functions and the ampersand to concatenate the values from the rightmost five columns. The template should already have the VLOOKUP that does the opposite of the other one to get us a letter back from the table below. We have successfully used matrix multiplication to turn our zeros and ones into negative ones and positive ones. To implement the at bash cipher, we want to take each letter and invert the ones and negative ones. For example, A was all negative ones, and if we convert those to all positive ones, we get Z. We already did a matrix multiplication to turn our zeros and ones into negative ones and positive ones. We could do this with a second matrix multiplication by putting negative ones on the major diagonal, but because these are both linear operations, we can combine them into one matrix multiplication. This will multiply by negative two and add one. In our linear transformation sheet, we just plug those new values in, and boom, we've implemented our at bash cipher. Feel free to try out other five letter words to see our linear transform in action. Having warmed up with some matrix multiplication, we are ready to implement all the features of our data converter box. Our goal will be the at bash cipher at first, and then we'll tackle reversing a string. I mentioned before that transformers have a way to remember other inputs and focus on just the important ones. They also have a way to do a linear transform on the data. The linear transform is done by multiplying the input by a weight matrix in order to get what the transformer authors call a value matrix. In addition to the value, we make two other matrices called the query matrix 
and the key matrix, which are both used for focus and memory. We will combine the query and the key to make what is known as an attention matrix. This attention matrix represents memory and focus. It effectively remembers only the important context to the task at hand. The attention matrix is combined with the value matrix to get the output of our data converter. Let's implement it and then we'll figure out how it works. Here in the at bash converter sheet, I've copied the input cell formulas from the previous sheet. This will serve as the input to our transformer layer. The weights we will use to create our query matrix are the multiply by two and subtract one matrix. I copied the at bash weights here for the value matrix because the value is directly tied to the output of this orange data converter box. To make our query matrix, we do a matrix multiply of the input matrix by our query weights. We do the same for the value matrix. It's unclear what to do with our key weights for now, so let's just use the identity. Like the other two, we make the key matrix by multiplying the input matrix by these placeholder key weights. Let's look ahead a bit to the first row of our output. Our goal is to focus on and remember this first row of our value matrix, and we want to ignore all other rows. For the second row of our output, we want to just focus on and remember the second row of the value matrix, and so on for our remaining outputs. We can accomplish this by coming to our attention matrix and manually setting it to the identity matrix. This means that the output of the S will depend 100% on the value from the S input row. The same thing for our other outputs. Then we can multiply our attention matrix by the value matrix. Again, order matters, and we have the correct outputs. Our output word has been encoded with the at bash cipher. To unlock the power of transformers though, we shouldn't be setting the attention matrix ourselves. We want to have the network be able to learn what to focus on and remember all by itself. And this is where the query and the key come in. The transformer paper says to multiply the query matrix by the transposed key matrix. We can use mmult again, along with transpose. Then we compute a row by row softmax. To do this, we use the exp function to raise Euler's constant to the power of the cell from our query times key value, and we repeat that for all cells. Then we sum each row. And finally, down in our attention matrix, we divide one of the exponent cells by the sum for its row. I made use of dollar signs to make this formula draggable. Hey, look, our attention matrix sort of looks like what we want. And our output is the encoded message. How did that happen? Well, let's look at the first row of our query matrix to understand what's going on. One way to think about this query row is that it describes how the rows in the key matrix can score points. A key row could score one point if it has a one in the second or third column, and it can lose a point if any of the last three columns have a one. The first column will not score or lose any points. Taking this first query row and looking at just the first row of the key matrix shows that we ignore the first column, score two points for the second and third column, and then do not lose any points for the last three columns. Two points in total. These are sometimes called compatibility scores. The second row scores one point, but then loses two points and has a total score of negative one. This repeats for the remaining rows. These scores effectively rate how well each key lined up with our first query row. Our compatibility scores could be really large numbers or really small numbers, so we use the softmax function to clamp everything to a range of 0 to 1.0. The first key row had the highest compatibility score, and so it has the highest softmax value. Therefore, the output should depend the most on the first value row. We could repeat the process for the second row in the query matrix. Oh wait, we did. By multiplying our query matrix with the transpose of the key matrix, we scored each query row by every key row. Then our row by row softmax computes the attention scores for each of these rows. And the last step was to apply this attention matrix to the value matrix, basically using our focused memory to pull out the important transformed data. For the first row, corresponding to the S input, we take 62% of the first row from the value matrix, 3% of this second row, 
8% of the third row and so on. And we add them all up to get the first row of our output. Because we have 62% of what we, the humans, know to be the right answer, our final result does decode to an H, just like we hoped. A similar process happens for these other output rows. We accidentally guessed a decent set of key weights here, so what if we try something else? I'm going to try a flipped identity matrix, with ones going down the minor diagonal instead of the major diagonal. This has the result of flipping our key matrix horizontally, and the attention matrix becomes a lot muddier. Apparently, there aren't as many good matches between our queries and our keys, and the at bash cipher no longer works. What if we copy our query weights into our key weights? This makes the key matrix and the query matrix identical, and we can see the attention becomes much more focused. One last thing I'll point out is that all this orange box was the data converter sublayer. This smaller blue area is where we can have our pattern finding neural network. Because this part isn't the primary focus of the video, I'll just put in the identity matrix for the weights and zeros for all of the biases. To implement a single layer neural network, we can use a single mmult to implement the network, which feeds into a ReLU calculation, and this completes one full layer of our transformer. Stepping back a moment, we used three matrices from our input. We combined two of these to create an attention matrix, which tells us which rows of the value matrix are worth remembering and how much to focus on them. This process is officially called self-attention, and the idea is that this self-attention sublayer changes our input data so it is easier for our neural network to find patterns. When I was researching transformers, the names query, key, and value all seemed a bit arbitrary to me. It wasn't until I found this metaphor of looking up a video on YouTube that the names clicked. The query is what you would type into the search box, the keys are all the video descriptions, and the values are the videos themselves. We have successfully implemented figure two from the original Transformers paper. I've removed the colors from my diagram because the colors I used mean different things than the figure two in the paper. Oh, we didn't touch mask or scaling, but those are relatively minor details and I've deferred them until the appendix video. Now is a perfectly reasonable time to be asking yourself, why bother with this complex self-attention thing anyway? What benefits does it have over the plain linear transform that we use to do the at bash cipher? To answer that, let's look at reversing a string. That is, switching the order of the characters from left to right to right to left. We would need to find a matrix that swaps the first row of our data with our last row, the second row with our second to last row, and so on. If you want to pause the video and try to find a matrix that does this, feel free. Try as we might, we cannot find such a matrix because this operation is non-linear. It is impossible to achieve this with matrix multiplication alone. The data converter box, with the addition of the softmax function, allows our network to learn how to manipulate data in non-linear ways. Before we can implement this, we need to add a bit more information to the system. Here is my mental model of the transformer, alternating stages of data conversion and pattern finding, where the data conversion makes the patterns easier to find. In the literature, you will see these stages called the self-attention sublayer and the feed-forward sublayer. Before now, I glossed over an important detail. How does our input data get into this first data converter layer? Zooming in on this first initial data box, remember that we took our input letters and converted them to binary. This is officially called embedding our data. We chose to embed our letters with five ones or zeros. In order to add or subtract via matrix multiplication, we added a column of ones. We borrowed this technique from how a standard neural network implements the addition of a bias. Now, because we are reversing a string, which deals with where the letters are in the word, we need to add some value so the network can reason about where a letter is. This is known as adding a positional encoding. Our embedded input, as well as the bias, will be primarily used by the value matrix. And this positional encoding will be important to the key and value for calculating the attention matrix. Let's go to the third sheet to see how. Here in the reverse converter sheet, I've made room for three extra columns in our model. These columns will have the positional encoding. As far as what values to use for the positional encoding, let's use the numbers 0 through 7. 0 will be the first letter, 7 the last, and the numbers in the middle for in between. The note on this cell has a very similar formula to before, which turns these binary digits into a vector. 
Then we repeat this formula for the other positional values. In order to combine our embedding and positional encoding, we add the two matrices together. This sum will be the input to our first transformer layer, and this is what we will use to make our query, key, and value matrices. We use three matrix multiplications, same as before. The weights for these three matrices are currently zero, so we will need to fix them to make this work. In order to reverse the string, we need to make the output associated with the first row pay attention to the last row, and vice versa. This means our query vector and our key vector should deal with the position part of our model, but in sort of opposite ways. For the query weights, let's use the same multiply by 2, subtract 1 weights, but only for the first three columns. Don't forget our 1's column is in column 4, so we need to put our negative 1's here in row 4. We can see that the query matrix has turned the zeros into negative ones and kept the ones as is. Notice also that the first row is the same as the last row multiplied by negative one. And the same thing is true for the second row and the second to last row. If we could make the key matrix be like the query matrix but multiplied by negative one, then the first query row and the last key row should have the highest compatibility score. To do that, let's create the key matrix by multiplying by negative two and then adding one. Wow, look at that attention matrix. It's exactly what we were hoping for, with the first letter R being the most compatible with the last letter D. All we need to do is fill in the value weights. Let's convert the data part of our matrix by multiplying by two and subtracting one, just like before. The last step is to do a matrix multiplication between the attention matrix and the value matrix and there we have it. We are successfully reversing a string. If you want to check your understanding, pause the video and think about how to make these three changes. Number one, how do we make the attention stronger? That is, how can we make the values on this minor diagonal closer to 1.0? Number two, how could we do the at bash cipher and reverse the string at the same time? And number three, how do we bring forward the positional encoding and the ones? Maybe our future layers need that information too, so we sort of want it in our output. To make the attention stronger, we can make our query and key matrices more extreme. More points for matching and more penalties for not matching. To do that, we can set the query weights to multiply by four and subtract two. See how the attention is more focused on the minor diagonal? To reverse the string and apply the at bash, we can change the linear transform part, that is our value weights. But instead of multiplying by two and subtracting one, We'll multiply by negative two and add one. This does not impact the attention at all, but it changes the values that the attention focuses on and remembers, thereby affecting the output. Finally, if we also want to bring along the positional encoding and the ones, that is the first four columns, we can add ones along the diagonal in our values matrix to bring these values along unchanged. There you have it. Some hands-on experience with the inner workings of a transformer. The big takeaway about transformers should be this mental model. After setting our initial data, we have multiple layers of data converters and pattern finders. The reason this structure helps us is that it can be easier to spot patterns by looking at data in new ways. The data converter box had some familiar concepts from convolutional and recurrent neural networks, focus and memory. This was implemented with an attention matrix, which was calculated from query and key matrices. In addition to remembering and focusing on the important parts of the input, this component is also capable of doing linear transformations of the data as handled by the value matrix. Officially, these boxes have names like feed forward sublayer and self attention sublayer. We saw the term embedding as it applied to our input data and positional encoding as something transformers add to help reason about the order of the input. If we look at figure one from the original transformers paper, we can see how the diagram shows these components. That NX means the gray box and the sublayers inside are repeated multiple times. The transformer authors outline a few extra features that they added to improve performance, but those extra boxes and arrows don't really change the big picture idea. If you're interested in these extra details, I have an appendix spreadsheet and a corresponding video that walks through some of those. There are additional resources on transformers linked in the description. Happy learning.